Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are just tuning in, my name is Christabel. When you have finished watching this video, please go and check out all the other videos that I've done on my channel. Anyway, in today's video, I'll be talking about the Magellanic, the Magellanic Clouds, the Pinwheel Galaxy, and the Antennae Galaxies. First, I will start with the Magellanic Clouds. The Large Magellanic Cloud is a nearby galaxy once considered to be an irregular type, until astronomers studied it more closely. It now turns out to be an irregular with a bar across its heart. It may have once been a spiral galaxy. The LMC, as it is known, is visible in Earth's southern hemisphere skies, along with its companion dwarf galaxy, the Small Magellanic Cloud, or also known as SMC. The Milky Way is consuming gas that is flowing from the Magellanic Clouds in the Magellanic Stream. Eventually, these two smaller galaxies might collide with the Milky Way. Both the LMC and the SMC have star-forming regions, and the LMC was the site of the spectacular 1987A supernova explosion. The Large Magellanic Cloud lies about 163,000 light years from Earth. Its companion, the Small Magellanic Cloud, is about 200,000 light years away. For many years, astronomers thought the Magellanic Clouds orbited the Milky Way. Recent measurements may prove that they could be moving too fast for that. The Magellanic clouds are gas rich, main, meaning they have a higher portion of their mass as gas. They also have less portion of their mass bound up in metallic elements. The Magellanic clouds have both had their shapes distorted by gravitational interactions with the Milky Way. As these galaxies pass near the Milky Way, the gravitational pull also misshapes the outer bars of our galaxy. Recent studies of the small Magellanic cloud indicate that it might be a former single galaxy split into two remnants. Gravitational interactions with the LMC may have broken that galaxy apart. The Large Magellanic Cloud contains a highly active starburst region called the Tarantula Nebula. It is part of a larger cloud of gas and dust, and its high rate of star formation may be caused by compression of interstellar gas and dust by the collision of the cloud with the interstellar media. The 1987A supernova exploded not far from this region. Now moving on to the Pinwheel Galaxy. The Pinwheel Galaxy in the constellation Ursa Major, or also known as the Greater Bear, is a grand design spiral, meaning that it has well-defined spiral arms and dust lanes that extend all the way around the body of the galaxy. It was discovered in 1781 by astronomer Pierre Mechelen and included as object number 101 in Charles Messier's list of celestial objects. The Pinwheel Galaxy is about twice the diameter of the Milky Way Galaxy and is formally defined as a weakly bud spiral galaxy. There are more than 3,000 starburst regions in the spiral arms of the Pinwheel Galaxy, the most of any similar type of galaxy thus far observed. observed. 
these are called HII regions for the copious amount of hydrogen they contain. The Pinwheel Galaxy has a fairly small central bulge with about 3 billion solar masses. Compared to the starburst action in the spiral arms, the bulge is very quiet with almost no stars being born there. While many galaxies have a central supermassive black hole, astronomers have not found one at the heart of the Pinwheel Galaxy. There are many X-ray sources in the Pinwheel Galaxy. They emanate, they emanate from exploded stars and regions around stellar mass black holes, where material is heated as it falls into the black hole. The Pinwheel belongs to a group of galaxies that are all interacting with each other gravitationally. As a result of this dance, their shapes are distorted. Now moving on to the antennae galaxies. The antennae is a pair of spiral galaxies that are interacting and mingling with their stars. They began their galactic dance over a few hundred million years ago and are currently in a period where they are colliding gas where the colliding gas, gas clouds are bursting with new star formation. As the two galaxies merge, the gravitational interactions pull long tails of gas away from each other, and these tails are the sites of star burst activity. In a few billion years, the cores of these two galaxies will be combined into one large core with a supermassive black hole at its heart. It will be surrounded by an elliptical galaxy of old stars. Spiral galaxies that combine that combine as, as the antennae are doing well most likely and ultimately end up as elliptical galaxies. The merger will erase all traces of their spiral arms. It is likely that when the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxies combine, they will look similar to the antennae during at least one point of their interaction. All of the millions of new stars created during the antennae measure, only about 10% of them will live longer than 10 million years. That's because there will be supermassive super there will be massive blue supergiants, a type of star that quickly consumes its nuclear fuel and explodes as a supernova. The remaining massive young star clusters formed during starburst activity will become the new galaxy's globular clusters. The antenna galaxies are the closest are the closest colliding galaxies to the Milky Way. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching everyone and please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And I just want to say before this video ends, thank you all for the 600 subscribers.